Hello and welcome to another HiViz how-to video. My name is Dal Winters and today I'll show you how to build the SK-2 sound trigger. First, let's have a look at the parts. So first we have our breadboard and the piezo element, two pieces of hookup wire, a one kilo ohm pot, SCR and transistor, two resistors, a battery clip, a three foot piece of two conductor cable, and the only tool that we need is a set of wire strippers. I'll build a circuit on this breadboard. So to know how to read the, your breadboard, you have letters on one side and numbers on the other side. And each hole is identifiable by one letter and one number. So for example, this hole is A10. I tell that by coming over from A and down from 10, and there it is. So to know how your breadboard works on the inside, each of the rows are connected together electrically by metal strips but there are no connections between rows or between each half of the breadboard. Um, for your red and blue columns here, each of the holes for the blue column are electrically connected and likewise for each of the holes for the red column, but there is no connection between columns and the same applies for the bottom of the breadboard here. The first part we're going to add is the piezoelectric element, which is the sound sensing component of the circuit. It has two leads, black and red, we're going to add the black lead to hole 4A, which is here, and the red lead to the nearest hole on the negative column, which is blue. The next part I'm going to do is hook up wire, and I'm going to do a piece across from 5E to 8F. First, I'm going to strip off a quarter inch from one end of the hookup wire and place that into 8F just to show you um, how that's done. Then I'm going to go to 5E and lay my piece of wire flat. And notice that I'm using my nail to mark a quarter inch past 5E, which is where I'm going to make my cut. So I'm taking the wire out, making the cut. Here we are. And I'm going to strip off a quarter inch off of this end now and fold that length of wire down so that I have a nice piece like this. Then I can just go from 5E to 8F with just the right amount of wire so that it uses the most amount of wire without much waste. Now I'm going to do the same for the other connections and for to know what those connections are, just refer to your online instructions. So now I have the hook of wires in place and the next part we'll add is the sensitivity adjustment which is this one kilo ohm potentiometer. Uh, we're going to add the two front legs of the pot into hole 7F, 9F, and the rear leg into hole 8J. So I'll show that now. 7F and 9F are right there, and this hole is 8J. I'll press it down firmly, and if it doesn't seat firmly, just spread the legs apart a bit, and it should seat fine. Okay, the next step is to add our SCR and transistor. These are two components that look almost alike. You can differentiate them by looking at the case. One of them will say EC103D, and that's the SCR. The other one will say 2N2222, and that's the transistor. We're going to work with the SCR first. So you want to hold it with the legs pointed downward and the flat side of the face facing toward you. And this will allow you to tell which legs will go where. Uh, in this orientation, the left leg will go into 7B, the middle leg into 8B, and the right leg into 9B. So I'll go ahead and add that now uh, into 7B, 8B, and 9B. And afterwards, you may wish to trim the leads a bit so that the SCR sits closer to the breadboard. Now I'm going to add the transistor, and likewise, you want to hold the transistor downward, and uh, with the face flat part of the face facing toward you, and the left leg will go into 3B, the middle leg into 4B, and the right leg into 5B. So I'll go ahead and add that to the breadboard now. So into 3B, 4B, and 5B, and there we are. The next part we're going to add are the resistors. I have in my hand a um, 100 kilo ohm resistor, and you can tell this apart from the 5.1 kilo ohm resistor by the bands that are on the casing. The 100 kilo ohm starts off with a brown band, followed by black and then a yellow. And we're going to add this resistor to rows 4D and 5F. I'm going to bend it a bit so that um, 
the legs are facing downward and I'm going to add the legs into 4D and 5F right now. Now notice that the legs are really long so what I want to do later is trim them but first I'll show adding the other resistor without trimming the legs so you can see how it's done. The other resistor is a 5.1 kilo resistor. Uh, it has a band, a green band followed by brown and then red and this one goes into 5i and the other lead goes into the nearest hole in the positive column which is red shown here. So now I have all of my components trimmed and um, so they see closer to the breadboard. That way that eliminates any danger of legs touching um, and, and creating electrical shorts. So now I'm ready to add my battery clip. I mentioned throughout the video that there are positive and negative columns which are red and blue here. I'm going to add the red lead of the battery clip to the red column and the black lead to the blue column. And next I'm going to work on the output cable. Now it's time to connect our circuit to the flash unit. For that purpose we have this two conductor cable, one end of which I've trimmed back. And the other end is to connect to a flash unit, which is the subject of another lesson, but the instructions are online. Now we're ready to connect our flash unit to our circuit. For that purpose, we have a flash foot adapter that's already been spliced to the two conductor output cable. We're going to connect one end of the output cable to our circuit. Uh, the red lead goes into hole 9A, and the black lead goes into the nearest hole on the blue negative column, like so. Now the uh, flash foot end goes onto the flash unit, and for this purpose we have a Nikon SP24 flash unit. An alternative method of connecting is using a PC cord, but for this we're going to go ahead and use the flash foot end and the flash unit is off. We're going to connect the battery and put the flash unit back on. Oh, and uh, now we're going to test the circuit. Circuit works. Now next we're going to adjust the sensitivity. To adjust the sensitivity of the circuit, we use this one kilo ohm potentiometer. You can use your fingers or a screwdriver as I'm doing and you want to rotate it one direction or the other until the flashes stop. Uh, rotating it counterclockwise and snapping your fingers, you'll find that at one point you won't have any more flashing no matter how you snap your fingers. So now rotate it clockwise and continue to snap your fingers and the flash once again goes off. When you reach that point, you've set your circuit for maximum sensitivity. Now we're ready to take everything into the lab and take some photos. Now we'll go through the process of taking a high speed photo using the open shutter technique. I have here a balloon that we're going to pop and a flash unit that's set to its lowest power in order to provide the shortest duration. The flash unit is connected to the circuit and the camera has been preset for exposure and also focus and the shutter speed has been set to one second to provide enough time to pop the balloon and have the shutter close. So now let's have the lights off and I'll demonstrate popping the balloon. Let's see if it pops. Wonderful. Now it's possible we didn't get the balloon pop on film because we're using a video camera, so let's conclude with a still photo of what we saw.